Hello, everyone. This is Rick with the Cyber Pro Podcast. Industry leaders share their insights. It's five questions in about nine minutes because hackers never sleep. Let's get to it. Gareth, who are you and what do you do? So my name is uh, Gareth Hart, and um, I'm traditionally an engineer by trade, and I've been uh, an engineer for about 13 years now, working at companies like eBay, General Motors, uh, and uh, my current title is I'm the uh, founder and CEO slash CTO of a decentralized and encrypted email service called Telios. We'll get to learning more about Telios in a second, but I'd love to hear why you just love being a cyber professional. Yeah, it's like a really interesting job because it, it's just always changing. You always have to, you kind of always have to stay on top of um, the latest industry trends uh, as as new vulnerabilities come out, as new technology comes out, and so it always keeps you on your toes. It's never it's never a boring field to, to be in. <laughs> Do you have anything in your mind right now that's like, man, I loved, I loved that, like that this event happened and it just made me super excited or just, a, you know, something that happened in your life around, you know, it, because you're a cyber professional that just made you go, man, this is why I love this. This is what I do this for. Uh, yeah, I actually like it when stuff gets attacked or I like it's, it kind of, you know, this fight or flight response kicks off and everything becomes really exciting all of a sudden. And, uh, you know, just actually a few weeks ago, we had, um, you know, attack on our mail server. We had a bunch of Russian and uh, Chinese IP addresses just flooding our mail server. And this was at like one in the morning uh, on the East Coast, my time. So I had to wake up and and, and deal with that. And, um, you know, so while, you know, it was kind of stressful, it was also really exciting. And without that, I think it, I just wouldn't keep coming back to this. That's awesome. I, I love the examples that we can grab sometimes. So Let's take that because you just talked about being hacked. Cybersecurity is a top concern. What does that mean to you? Uh, it means to me that uh, because if it's a top concern, concern because I, I think it's uh, there's a lot of holes in, in how cybersecurity is done today. So you know, with Web 2.0, um, everything is centrally located right now on a server or, or a cloud infrastructure, uh, which means that uh, you know there's a you know a single attack vector where everyone's data is that everybody can, can get into. And so I think that there's still a lot of headway and innovation to be had to, uh, you know, to mitigate a lot of this stuff and start spreading out the attack vector and making things harder to, to breach and, and break into when it comes to, you know, data. So what insight do you want to share with our network of cyber folks? Uh, yeah, so my focus is, is really on decentralized internet. So Web3 or, you know, whatever people are calling it, there's a lot of names for it. But I, so I, I used to work at a bank before doing this and, um, you know, the headaches and, you know, red tape and everything you have to go through at, at a place like a bank because everything's stored on, on a single server is, is just a nightmare, especially when you've got these very large organizations uh, and it has to be like that because, you know, everything's stored in one spot and, you know, you have to kind of go above and beyond to, to protect that, that single resource. And so while I was there, you know, I started really studying the decentralized tech. And I th really think this is the future. And I think it makes a lot of sense from a cybersecurity and privacy standpoint. Um, you know, the, a lot of the tech is still very early. But I think overall, in the long run, I think people's data uh, and and just systems in general will be more secure moving to decentralized architectures. Fun question for you, Gareth. Favorite piece of retro technology that makes you smile? Man, I love '90s arcade fighting machines. So, like when I was younger, uh, you know, I'm talking like in the in the early mid '90s, my parents would take us to the mall and we would scrounge up at whatever quarters we had. And we'd go there and play Mortal Kombat or Tekken um, until we just ran out of quarters while our moms went and shopped at, uh, you know, Boscoff's or whatever, whatever wherever they're going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So Tekken, Mortal Kombat, or Street Fighter? Uh, Mortal Kombat was, was my jam. That's, that's the one I, I played the most. But then after that, I, I'd say Street Fighter. Nice. Did you have a favorite character in Mortal Kombat? Uh, yeah, it was Raiden. Yep. Interesting. I still, I think, yeah. And I, I went back, I had a friend who, uh, you know, had a retro, you know, original Sega 
uh, console and I went back and played. And I still remembered all the moves and everything. The, the muscle memory is still there from when I was, you know, like a, uh, you know, 10 year old kid. <laughs> Amazing. Is there anything you think would be important for me to ask that you want to give out to the network and get just out to an audience? I think like the real point I was kind of really just trying to tr drive home is data ownership and data sovereignty, right? Um, kind of going back to the, the 90s fighting games, I, I felt like when we were using the internet back in the 90s, it, it felt like this wild west, right? Like you didn't, we weren't worried about companies spying on you or selling your data or being tracked everywhere you went. And I feel like now the internet is just sort of this, um, you know, corporate dystopia, you know, where everybody, you know, everybody's tracking you, everybody's storing your data. And I kind of missed the wild west feeling of the internet. And so, um, you know, that's what I missed the wild west feeling. Then I, I also, um, you know, kind of miss owning my data. Uh, you know, I don't think any of us really own anything online anymore, unless it's kind of on your own personal hard drive. And so, uh, yeah, that's kind of the real point in trying to get, get to cross people. I think um, the centralized internet is maturing to a point now where I think in the next few years, we're going to really start seeing um, a lot more apps come out that are uh, decentralized. And I think it's going to be in people's best interest to move to those apps from a security standpoint, right? So it, I, I think we've seen so many breaches. Uh, I don't know if there's any large company that has not had a data breach, no matter who they are. Um, and so I think it's going to behoove people to really, uh, you know, research and get in on this technology early and start moving their infrastructure over there as it matures. Because um, I think the the way we're storing things now is, is going to drastically change in probably the next five years. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yep, thank you. You did it. You made it to the end. Check us out for future podcasts and more content.